Hello friends, welcome back to another tutorial of BSMLE topics. Today I'm going to be talking about LAC operon. And um, I know this is quite a simple topic, but sometimes because it's so less represented in any of the USMLE books, so I thought I would do a separate video on LAC operon. Alright, so let's get started. So like any other topic, I always like to start with the basic and kind of build on my information that I already know. So we know that lac operon deals with lactose. So let's talk about the lactose fermenters. Um, so the lactose fermenters are, I use a mnemonic key, K-E-E, -E, K for Klebsiella, E for E. coli, the other E for Enterobacter, and the slow fermenters are CS, so Citrobacter and Serratia. All right, so these are the lactose fermenters. Um, and what exactly is lac operon? Lac operon is a prokaryotic gene regulation. What does that really mean? It means that these bacteria, especially E. coli, lac operon is usually modeled with E. coli, and it's probably 100% you're going to probably see an example with E. coli. So let's talk about E. coli. E. coli or other lactose fermenters can use both glucose and lactose. Okay, They can use both glucose and lactose, but lactose is a little more complex than the basic glucose, so it needs more enzymes to break down lactose, which the bacteria needs to be able to make to use it uh, for a source of energy. Now that process of turning on that um, turning on that operator to make those extra enzymes when there is lactose present, that turning on regulation is lac operon. So when there is glucose, it's not going to turn on those um, operator, which is going to make those enzymes, uh, which is going to metabolize lactose. I'm sorry about the bell sound. I'm not sure where it's coming from. It's driving me crazy but I have no idea where it's coming from, so I hope it's not too annoying. So anyway, so, um, so LAC operon only works when there is um, lactose. It is otherwise going to inhibit making those enzymes um, that it makes when lactose is present. So that regulation is called LAC operon regulation or anything you want to call it. So that's one thing. Second thing I want to talk about is when there is glucose, what happens? This is glucose is going to decrease adenylate cyclase, okay? And that's also going to decrease um, CAMP, okay? But when there is lactose, it's going to increase adenylate cyclase. And it's also going to increase um, CAMP. All right, so keep that in mind. And also, one more thing I would like to um, mention is that when we break down lactose, um, and I'm talking about the prokaryotic situation, not in eukaryotes, we have lactose here, and we use this enzyme called beta galactosidase it's going to break down lactose and give us galactose plus glucose okay, so these are little information that you kind of have to know in order to navigate yourself with a lactose operon question all right so now that we are kind of uh, familiar with the method let's look at a diagram so this is a diagram of a lac operon. So this is the DNA, and um, this is the promoter, this is the regulator gene, promoter, operator, and these are the different, the three different genes, the structural genes. Now, what is when, whether the operator is before the promoter, promoter, that the orientation is not as important as the concept of the question. So when there is glucose, present and there's no lactose present the repressor 
is going to come and bind to the operator right here. Okay, the repressor is going to come and bind to the operator, and the genes are not, and these Z, Y, and A genes are the structural genes are not going to be stimulated. If the structural genes are not stimulated, then beta galactosidase is not going to be produced. And if beta galactosidase is not going to be produced, we will not be able to break down galactose like here, right? We talked about how beta gal galactosidase is breaking down lactose. Okay, so, or, you know, this Z is for beta galactosidase, Y is for permease, beta galactosidase permease, and A is for beta-galactosidase transacetylase. So these are different types of beta-galactosidase. All right, so, um, so if I ask you that in, in a certain experiment there is an E. coli and glucose is there, but there is no lactose, which substance is going to be decreased? You can say it could be adenylate cyclase or CAMP. Or if there is lactose present, present, which substance is going to be increased? So you can say CAMP is going to be increased, beta galactosidase is going to be increased. All right, and when lactose is present, the the gene or the E. coli is going to be try try to be more efficient, and that's when it's going to turn on those genes, and the repressor is not going to bind to the operator, and it's going to. And what is repressor? It's an inhibitor. That's it. The repressor is not going to be binding to the operator and those enzymes are going to be produced. And why this happens? It's because it's, it's a more efficient way of making enzymes. Why make all those enzymes when there is no lactose? That's, that's what it is. There is no trick to it. It's just that it's a more efficient way of uh, using those enzymes whenever it's necessary. Okay, so that's about it. And I'll there is not much notes on this video, so I'll probably not post it on my blog. Um, Alright, so I'll see you guys on my next video. Bye for now, and thank you for watching.